So yesterday, or at least last episode on the X3 over here, we did entirely new suspension all the way around, new struts, new shocks, new mounts, new bump stops, all that good stuff. So it's riding really nicely, though the brakes are looking really rough on this car right now. As I told you guys, and as I've told you in many episodes, if you can feel a big lip on the outer edge of your brake rotor, or also on the inner edge, because brake rotors can be resurfaced, in which case the outer edge might be smooth, feel the inner edge as well. If that's raised up a lot, your brake rotors are probably on the way out, especially if you can feel some warping or, or unevenness in your braking. It's probably time for new rotors, or if your braking is just a little bit weak, it might be time for new pads. I'm gonna do all new rotors, all new pads on this thing so it's solid and ready to go. So let's take a look at what I picked up for the car. As you guys know, I picked up eBay suspension, as funny as that sounds, and I'm pretty happy with it so far. It is a $500 X3. So we're not going to be putting OEM, Bilstein, you know, high quality parts on the car. We're just looking for something that's going to work and do a good job. So I didn't cheap out quite as hard on the brakes because brakes are definitely an important component. So for brakes, I got myself not one, but two pairs of R1 Concepts black coated drilled and slotted rotors along with some new pads. Let's open these up, see what we get. So I'm assuming we have one rotor and two pads in each of those boxes. Oh, never mind. Our pads are probably in these smaller boxes here. And we have two more rotors. Oh man, these things are sweet. Holy cow. Look at that. Beautiful rotors. Drilled and slotted, of course. So you might be asking, why are they drilled and why are they slotted? They're drilled to reduce heat buildup. Apparently the drilling can reduce temperatures up to 105 degrees, which is pretty crazy. And then the diamond slot shape here, they remove debris from the brake rotors and just from the road surface, which not only extends the life of the rotor, but also of the pads. All of the rotors do have a zinc coating, which prevents corrosion. And I know you might be saying, oh, well, the coating is gonna come off on the part where the pads make contact. Yes, that may happen over time, but it's not gonna happen to this part that doesn't make contact with the pads. And this can be a very ugly eyesore if it builds up rust. Like on my F30, for instance, I'm actually gonna be replacing my rotors pretty soon with probably something very similar to this. I assume we can expect something fairly similar from the other rotors. These are probably our front rotors, if I had to guess. Also, very attractive black coated rotor, drilled and slotted, of course. Now let's take a look at our pads. These are gonna be our front pads here because they are larger. Pretty beefy, solid quality. These are ceramic pads, which is gonna greatly reduce the amount of brake dust we're producing and it should increase the life. Pretty basic, but they look good. All right, with that out of the way, it's time to get the M550 out of the garage, pull the X3 in, get it up on the lift, pull the wheels off and we'll get to work. All right, so just had a little bit of a scare when I put the X3 up on the lift. It had a major leak, which I diagnosed to actually be, believe it or not, coming out of the rear near the fuel tank. That was actually my, uh, my windshield wiper fluid because, of course, on the X3, we do have a rear windshield wiper. And apparently my line feeds the, the fluid up from the reservoir to the trunk. That line is shot, which would explain why the reservoir was empty when I bought the car. That's a project for another day, but we've got the wheels off. Here's a look at the brakes. They're really nasty right now. I just went around and hit each brake right on this screw right here that holds on the rotor. I hit that with PB Blaster, as well as the two bolts on the back that hold on the caliper. So I've done that to all four brakes, just trying to get those loosened up because that is gonna be an area of difficulty, or at least it was on my E90 when I did my rotors. This little screw right here was a real pain. So I'm hoping we have better luck today, but yeah, time to jump into it. So first and foremost, we're gonna to come to the back of the caliper here and over our guide bolts, there's gonna be two protecting caps just like this. So we're gonna pop them off with a flathead 
and there's one on the bottom in the identical location. And with those caps removed, we can come in with a T45 Torx, come in behind the caliper, and we're gonna break these guide bolts loose. Not too corroded after spraying them with PB Blaster. And before we fully remove the caliper, we do want to remove the guide clip here. So just use a flathead, pop that loose, set it aside for now. And we can now come back in with our T45 Torx to remove the guide bolt entirely. It's just a bolt with a female head for that T45 Torx and a threaded section and your caliper slides along this guide bolt. Just like the top, we have the same thing on the bottom. And after removing those, your caliper should slide right off. But before you remove it, grab yourself a bungee cord. As you won't want your caliper dangling, you'll want to support it with a bungee cord or otherwise. But before we do, we can pull our old pads out of here. As you can see, very worn out. Pull those guys out. We can put a bungee in one of the holes, loop this up around your shock spring, and one through the other hole. That will support it just fine. And now to remove the caliper bracket so we can remove the rotor. We have two 18 millimeter bolts, one on the top right here and one on the bottom. It's gonna be the same on the other side, of course, and 16 millimeter in the rear. And fully removing both of these bolts will allow you to remove the caliper bracket here. Set that aside, of course. And now for one of my favorite parts, you get to remove this little uh, six millimeter Allen screw that retains the rotor. Now you wanna be extremely careful when removing this because if you mess up, it's in there and you're gonna have to drill it out. So try not to strip the head of this. Be careful. Oh, there we go. PB Blaster, baby. I swear by that stuff. Now, if you're really lucky like me, your rotor will just come off right away on its own. If not, you can take a sledgehammer and pound on the face of it. If your rotors are this gone, you shouldn't really care about pounding on them. But if you are concerned, you can stick a flathead screwdriver in the vents and try to pry it off that way. Mine came off pretty easily, so we're in business. While we're at this point, it's not a bad idea to clean off some of the corrosion on the hub using either a wire brush or a wire wheel. Now, I was just matching up components on the workbench. Let's take a second to appreciate. This is the before, this is the after. Beautiful improvement here, of course. Um, obviously, we don't have that raised edge. It's just all one smooth plane, of course. And then even more impressively, looking at the pads here, the new pad is, of course, on the left, old pad is on the right. Old pad, new pad, new pad, old pad, and you can see the thickness difference there. You can see the slant on this one still, as well as on this one. So that would indicate that we still have a little bit of life left, but they're pretty far gone. Glad we're replacing them. But just to give a little shout out to R1, we have the exact same design here, same bracketry and everything. So should be a smooth installation. Should we need to swap the rotors on this car again or remove them, I'm gonna apply a little bit of brake grease to the hub. Now, in an effort to keep brake noise to a minimum, we're gonna apply some noise free to the back of the brake pads. Should give about 20 minutes for this to haze over and tack up before installing on the car. So in the meantime, we can install our new rotor. Careful not to get any contaminants on the face of it. Line up the securing screw hole right here on the hub. Grab that six millimeter hex screw insert it, try to thread it in by hand, and then tighten it down with your six millimeter hex head. At this point, we can also reinstall our caliper bracket and the accompanying 18 millimeter bolts. Now, a helpful trick I've shown when doing brake jobs like this is you can compress your caliper with a C-clamp, put one end of the C-clamp on the piston, other end on the back of the caliper, and you can compress your piston, which will make the installation of your pads and eventually the reinstallation of your caliper a lot easier. Now, all that's left to do is install our new pads here. So we'll first do the main pad that sits in the piston, get it into place, lock it in there. You can then unhook your caliper, install the other pad, on the outside, get that pushed all the way in against your rotor. 
And then you can slide your caliper right on over that. Make sure it's secure, it's not gonna fall off. We're gonna grab our guide pins, grease them up just a little bit so the caliper slides easily on them. We'll reinsert them from the back. Tighten them down with a T45, reinstall the caps, and we'll reinstall our retaining clip on the front. Get everything clipped into place. Make sure it's not gonna rattle loose on its own, and you're good to go. Well guys, I have to say, these puppies, these look a whole lot better than what we were working with before. Oh, gosh. These things are just rusted to bits. So yeah, I'm super stoked. Obviously with the appearance, drilled and slotted rotors always look good, not to mention black ones. They're gonna look sweet poking through those rims. So I'm gonna go repeat the same process over on the driver's side. I don't know if I'm gonna film the rear because it is the exact identical process with the one exception that your two bolts on the back of the caliper are 16 millimeter instead of 18 millimeter. Um, I don't think I need to go over that process again with you guys just because it's so messy and I'm getting stuff all over my camera. So I'll catch you guys when I wrap up all the brakes on the car and I will go over quickly the brake pad wear sensor, which is located in the driver's front and the passenger rear of the X3 and most BMWs for that matter. And those should be replaced when you replace your pads. While we're up at the driver's front where the brake wear sensor is located, might as well show you guys this. I got a pair of new brake wear sensor wires uh, I think it was like, it was less than $20. So you might as well go and replace them while you're you're doing your brakes. I'm gonna pull off my old one, determine which one is the shorter one. I believe the shorter one goes in the front. Let's pull it off and replace it. Inside of this little door right here are your two electrical connections that go to the wheel. On the left, we have the brake wear sensor. This is our wheel speed sensor or ABS sensor. So to remove brake wear sensor, we're just gonna, just gonna press down on the tab, pull it loose. Nice clean connection inside so we don't have to worry about that. And then you just have some rubber fittings that you have to pop loose. The wire is often fed through the bleeder cap cover right here. Pull that off and remove it. I just verified that it is in fact the shorter wire that goes in front. So we're just gonna plug this puppy in. Listen for that little click. Make sure it can't come loose on its own. We'll re-secure this connection inside the little black door, clip it shut, and we'll re-guide our wires safely down to the brake, clipping it into place where necessary. Again, secure that right over the bleeder. I'm gonna leave it loose for the time being, just so we can maneuver it into the brake, and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. All right, so here is our sensor wire, of course, and on the end of it, there's two different faces. There's one flat face. That's gonna go towards the back of the caliper in this way and there's a little nub on this side that wears down and completes a circuit when pads are fully worn so this side is going to want to face your rotor it right in this little hole right here it's a little difficult to show you guys but there's that u receptacle in the back brake pad i know it's really tough to see but there's this little receptacle right here where my finger is you're going to pop it in with this little metal clip that's around it again have the nub facing this way and you should be golden and here it is fully installed as you can see i popped that into place right there ran my wire secured it on the bleeder screw cap right here popped it into place right here and one more time up there. And that's how you replace your brake pad wear sensor. All right, a couple hours later here, we're all done with the brakes on the BMW here. Give you a quick walk around, starting over at the passenger front. Sweet new black rotors and ceramic pads all the way around. The rears were quite easy. The only thing I ran into was you can't really remove your guide pin with this rear strut in the way. So I ended up just unbolting the two 16 millimeters and doing it that way. You don't necessarily have to remove the guide pins. It just makes installing the pads a little easier. But in the rear here, you can easily just do those two 16 millimeters and it makes the job a lot quicker. And while I was at it, I also did the rear brake sensor, of course, and I also did new ABS sensors all the way around. So that's that other wire that you see on all four corners. Just because I've had a few error codes and I want to take care of that. So we're all done with the brakes, all done with the sensors. Now we just have to slap the wheels on and go take her for a test drive. All right, guys, we're here in the X3 on the road with my lovely assistant, Kaylin, behind the camera. <laughs> and I've yet to make my first stop with the new brakes other than the end of the driveway, so um, let's find out if they work. 
Here we go. Are you going to brake check or something? I'm going to brake right now. Ooh, very smooth, very smooth. I like it. I'm throwing Kayla on her head as much as I can right now. All right, we're going to do a very strong brake test in three, two, one. Oh, oh shit. Oh, it's what? <gasps> Why'd you swear? I took it all. Oh, gonna, now the camera's all messed up. It's on a bunch of squares. The, broke the camera. <laughs> I thought I was going to drop it. I was like, no. Brake test. Very good, very smooth. I like them. I don't like the smell of that truck though. Wow, I feel like I'm on a vlogging channel right now. I know, I feel like David Dobrik. Vlog squad. All right, well, confirmed uh, the brakes do work, so that's dope. They're really strong, really smooth. I'm gonna have to break them in and bed the pads. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with that process, you have to go up to about 60 miles an hour, slam on the brakes down to like 20 on an off ramp, and then let the brakes cool for about five, 10 minutes and repeat, rinse and repeat until you've fully bedded the pads. I'll do that another time, but I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you did, please go leave a like down below. Subscribe for more BMW content. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time on JD Cars.